Saudis are overtaking Qatar and sponsoring the Syrian rebels. It says here that a 12-member delegation from the Syrian opposition visited Saudi Arabia from an unprecedented two-day official meeting. Saudi authorities had consistently declined to meet the opposition despite repeated requests. It says usually they had opposed the Muslim Brotherhood, but last week, surprisingly, the Saudi foreign minister met the Syrian Brotherhood uh, deputy leader. Um, so this is probably, like I said before, because they're not getting what they want, which is regime change. It says here that uh, this is a shift in regional dynamics, and he also, two separate sources close to the opposition, basically terrorists, assured Saudi minister that Syria's brotherhood will definitely not be like Egypt's brotherhood. He also harshly criticized Qatar's role, even though Qatar had helped revive the brotherhood in Syria after the Baathists massacred it out of existence in 1982. Syria in conflict, U.S. and U.K. pledged to bolster opposition. They will strengthen uh, the moderate opposition in Syria and create a transitional body, at least that's what they hope in the coming weeks. It says there's an urgent window of opportunity before the worst fears are realized, that is, that they lose. They said the U.S. recently supposedly won Russian support for the conference. Austria refutes British attempts to arm terrorists in Syria. Austria has refuted British and French push for lifting the European Union's arms embargo on Syria for them to be able to sell heavy weaponry to foreign-backed terrorists. This is, of course, what the the uh, UN Arms Treaty was all about so that they can fund, the West can fund their terrorist groups uh, where other countries uh, basically will have a hard time uh, funding whatever insurgents that they have, right? I'm sure most uh, like intelligence agencies have their own black ops, their own countries have their own black ops of, uh, of terrorists. It says in a report, Die Britain, uh, it says here the Brits are not abused. The Australian, Austrian paper reported that lifting the embargo would constitute a breach of international and EU law saying if the weapons ended up in the hands of al Nasra or the al Nasra Front, it would also violate UN Security Council resolutions on Al-Qaeda, giving al Nasra a state affiliation. So. All right, Syria ready for joint inquiry. Erdogan's government blamed for Turkey's, uh, Turkey attacks or Turkish attacks. Syria is ready to start a joint inquiry with Turkey to investigate the attacks in the border town says that the Turkish government that has already accused Syria of plotting the tax calls for a joint investigation by the two countries. Syria has no objection or to find the truth. The Turkish government is investing uh, the attacks to utilize them politically, he added. The truth must be announced to the Syrian and Turkish people. Turkey has accused a radical Marxist group affiliated with the Syrian government of the attack. Lastly, the attacks are aimed at blowing up the relations between the people of Syria and Turkey. Turkish students condemn government Syria's policy. And I have a lot of news I'm going to get to. I'm going to be going through about six videos today, so I'm going to try to cover uh, Africa, uh, the elections and that. So just stick with me here. Uh, hundreds of university students protesting the Turkish government's stance on the on ongoing crisis in Syria have clashed with police in the capital. So. They censored Erdogan's policies of funding and supporting the foreign-backed militants oper operating inside the country. Explosion rocks Turkish capital and casualties are feared. A bomb blast has rocked the Turkish capital in Kara with early reports indicating that there may be casualties. So maybe a little tit for tat, I don't know. But this is my website, ggnonline.com. It's a good way to find, um, besides YouTube, uh, you can find all the archive of my videos going back to 2009. So also it's a... Another way to donate if you could. It's appreciated. I know it's it's hard. So, so next up, I have CIS security services to track Syria mercenaries. Says the uh, basically Russia's federal security service said they will be closely monitoring the movement of mercenaries from CIS nations or Commonwealth of Independent States fighting in Syria. It says according to the security service, some 200 mercenaries from Russia as well as from CIS member states and Europe are fighting in Syria's civil war. They say the mercenaries pose a severe danger. It is highly important to track their movements following the end of the hostilities, i.e. regime change. Again, so now Russia is just repeating what's already been said in Germany, uh, France, UK, which is um, they're worried about or they're concerned about the blowback of this, um, of, of basically political engineering, what they're doing, uh, trying to create this uh, regime change calling it an uprising or civil war when, like I said before, it's kind of an invasion of foreign mercenaries and foreign terrorists. So the, all these countries are, uh, you know, I don't know, I can't speak on behalf of Russia, but from what I've seen, all the news, most of the Western European uh, countries are supporting uh, the opposition or these terrorists and mercenaries. Uh, 
and you know, if you don't believe me, here's just another article that I've covered uh, a couple times before. Syria's uprising, Mossad and Blackwater and CIA led operations in Homs, the Homs district. They're involved in uh, military operations, which we know, along with the SAS. State Department conducts secret visit with death squad leader in Syria. So the chaos promoter Robert Ford's secret meeting with death squad leader points to eliminating Assad and increasing atrocities. So as the Syrian army continues to gain the upper hand against the NATO-backed death squads made up of mercenaries, fanatics, and al-Qaeda terrorists, it appears the West is, uh, yeah, the ones that are responsible for the creation of this rebellion have kicked into high gear as the advance of their proxy army has been stalled. It says this is made clear by the recent secret visit by former U.S. ambassador to Syria and notorious destabilization agent Robert Ford made to the current death squad leader, who was pretty interesting because... Um, I think that was the individual that actually tore out uh, one of the Syrian government uh, soldiers' uh, heart and ate it. And they said they have no regrets and there will be more videos to come. Is Israel hastening the fall of Assad? It says Israel's official silence following an, its airstrike on the weapons depot in Syria uh, fueled accusations in every direction. It says here Damascus condemned it as an attempt to destroy the re uh, regime. Tehran said the real targets were Iran and Hezbollah. Uh, analysts in the U.S. said it was a demonstration of credibility, but now a Syrian rebel commander has a different take, saying the assault was in support of Assad. So the commander of the brigade told the Turkish news agency that Assad's regime has in fact already been defeated and the, that Iran and Hezbollah, with Iran's backing, are preventing his downfall. It says the Syrian opposition was on the verge of taking over Assad's weapons caches, and that's why Israel attacked Syria. Well, this just seems like a bunch of BS to me. It said Israel bombed those caches for fear that they would fall in the hands of the opposition. It says they contain air defense systems and heavy artillery. The assault was in support of Assad. So this is uh, this is some... Uh, um, I, I've talked about this before. I've raised this point about how in the media, um, a lot of times they'll try to pin Assad as somehow pro-Israel or try to link uh, some kind of conspiracy between Israel and Assad. This is just another tricky attempt uh, by Zionists and Western countries uh, to basically uh, cause dissent or, you know, among uh, Assad's followers and that. They're just trying to put pressure on them. It's like Israeli airstrikes uh, over the weekend, then all of a sudden you got the explosions with Turkey on that border. So it's all about keeping pressure, overwhelming them. Getting a regime change uh, prior to that, I believe it's a 2014 um, uh, basically reforms that they have uh, are ready, but also it is aimed at Iran, who's also going through their elections right now as well. So it says here this claim about this claim is about as credible as the rest of the assertions of Israel's intent. Israel mulling plot to assassinate Assad. The re Israeli regime's security bodies are working on a plot to assassinate uh, President Assad by the help of terrorist groups and armed rebels in the country after Damascus showed strength and months of resistance against the terrorist attacks orchestrated by the U.S., Israel, and Arab partners as Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Israeli Vala news website reported that the Israeli security and spy agencies were shocked at Assad's resistance against the two years of terrorist and sabotage operations against the country. So as earlier, a documentary movie posted on the Lebanese website unveils details of a plot by the French and Turkish intelligence services to assassinate the president. Lavrov, Russia's foreign minister, stresses Iran must attend international conference on Syria. He says Iran plays a key role in solving the current crisis in Syria. He slammed the U.S. saying Washington has been seeking to increase the participation of countries which have been supporting the foreign-backed military opera operation or opposition in Syria. He says while Moscow calls for the participation of more members, including Syria, Syria's neighboring countries, Iran and Saudi Arabia, in the second round of talks, Washington is trying to decrease the number of these participating countries and replace them with those countries who are supporting the militant groups in Syria. Uh, Iran has been hit by um, some uh, earthquakes recently in the past month or probably the last month and a half, maybe about two or three of them, decent ones. Some people were killed. It says, what could finally topple Iran's regime? Earthquakes. So this is from the CS Monitor. So again, this is just laying the precedent so that when they do harp, um, Iran. I know it's on a you know tectonic uh, zone and fault lines, like kind of like Turkey. Uh, but uh, you know these hard weapons are able to trigger uh, these fault lines and create earthquakes, much like fracking does. So if it ever does happen, you know, it's uh, it's like they said. There's nothing. There's no nuclear program that can save the regime from a toppling earthquake. U.S. building military base in Afghanistan near Iran border.
Afghan President Karzai said on May 9th that the U.S. had demanded to keep nine military bases across the war-torn country, adding that we are in very serious and delicate negotiations with America. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, the White House spokesman said uh, that Karzai's remarks does not seek, they do not seek permanent military bases in Afghanistan. So Karzai's going out there, I don't know, he's probably just trying to win support for his people because uh, he realized he's a Western puppet or he's, he's ha he has been. So now he's playing this card. Uh, and, of course, everything that he says probably has some truth to it. And then the White House, of course, uh, turns it around and counters that and says that it's not true. But speaking of bases, uh, we've covered this before about Uzbekistan being uh, kind of a, a, a base for holding military uh, hardware and that um, possibly aimed at Russia or, you know, it's, it's in the near Central Asia, it's part of Central Asia. And so we know who that's aimed at, uh, uh, China, Russia, who knows. Uh, like I said, uh, I believe personally that they're all that they're all basically run by the same mob, mafia, families, bloodlines, or financial interests. But amidst all that chaos, um, you know, it's all about uh, consolidation, global consolidation of society and finance. In other words, if they do try to play out this us versus them, east versus west thing, it'll most likely kind of go down in Central Asia and these areas, especially with Iran. Uh, so we're talking about the base of Uzbekistan. It says here, official says Azerbaijan not to be used as a base to attack Iran. So this is actually, uh, this was something that was going around uh, about a, an actual base, and they would give Azerbaijan a part of Iran, uh, like the corner of it, if they aided them in the attack. So Iran's elections leader advises Iranian nation to choose competent president says in order to realize their objectives and disappoint the enemy, the people should enthusiastically take part in the election to choose from among those candidates that the Guardian Council introduces based on legal standards, a competent, virtuous, pious, revolutionary, resolute, and steadfast person with jihadi perseverance who can shoulder the heavy responsibility of the country's dignity and progress in a better manner than the other candidate candidates are says here um, that although the election is around one month away, this matter has turned into an important internal, I'm sorry, international issue in global think tanks, and the enemies of Iran are even carefully monitoring its preliminary stages. So he warns that the U.S. or the West, basically, uh, wants to create voter apathy and would like to see a person uh, come to power who drags Iran into dependence, weakness, and backwardness in various fields and puts it on the path of the foreigners' policies. So that's why you're going to see stuff like this from Western sites. Uh, State Department officials denounce repression in the lead up to Iranian presidential elections so they have to discredit uh, actual democracies. That's what's so funny is that there's actually more democratic processes going on around the world. And the least, the least democratic states are the ones that always cry humanitarianism and uh, uh, repression and uh, these, quote, dictatorships or repressed nations. It's pretty scary because you see that happen a lot, uh, whether it's Pakistan, whether it's in, uh, especially Venezuela recently, it just goes to show you that the opposition is completely, a lot of times, uh, completely bought out. Uh, Iran election to be another face-off for old allies. So yeah, they were both part of the revolution against the Shah, overthrowing them, and um, also the Iraq war, they say. A reformist, uh, Moles dropping out in favor of Hashemi, so Kava Kebian. Not sure if I butchered that, but uh, says here that uh, he's been growing speculation about the possibility of pro-reform hopefuls dropping their presidential bid in favor of Hashemi, uh, this Rasfanhani. That's actually one of the individuals that we're just talking about, one of these old uh, old guys, uh, who currently chairs Iran's Expediency Council. He added that creating jobs uh, uh, basically tops his economic agenda and that the country's unemployment can be resolved through a four-year plan. He said that they hope to believe... Yeah, they believe that reducing imports will encourage investment and will eventually reduce joblessness. So the election will take place on June 14th. Pakistan election winner Nawaz Sharif tells rival Khan to stop sledging. Show the sportsman spirit and stop uh, basically decrying uh, a fraud, election fraud. Now let's, let's check this out. EU creates pro-democracy regime change slush fund to fight tyrants. Back to this article, Pakistan election, EU election observer mission broadly praised the elections on Monday. So there you go, approved by the EU pro-democracy regime change slush fund. Irregularities in Pakistan elections, over 100% voting witnessed in 49 
polling station. And finishing up for this first part, Pakistan's age-old battle, Sharif versus the army, his third time a charm. So after a, def uh, says a decisive win, uh, Sharif is set to form a record third government in his 30-year political career. Say it's the first peaceful transition of power uh, in a long history. Thank you.